Hello quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber. And today we're going to work on the pattern that comes inside the diamond strip ruler. So when you get the diamond strip ruler, it comes with full instructions on how to use the ruler, as well as a free pattern for a mini quilt. All you need to make this mini quilt is your diamond strip ruler, the pattern that comes with it, five fat quarters and then of course your traditional sewing supplies like a rotary cutter sewing machine thread those kinds of things it makes this little quilt right here um which is kind of like a starburst looking thing so it's fun to have five fabrics in a gradient and that's what i've picked here um i picked kind of a little bit of a different gradient so i've got a really light and then a medium and then i picked a red to go in here and then i have this insect fabric which is gonna be really interesting to see how it cuts up because the thinnest size of these diamonds are just one inch. So these, um, it'll be interesting to see how these insects get chopped up. <laughs> and then we have this pretty blue fabric. So let's get started. All right, so I've picked my fabrics. I have them in place from fabric five through one. So when I look at my instructions for the pattern, it shows here fabric one is my lightest fabric, two, three, four, five is my darkest fabric. And I want to keep that, I think, for this with fabric one being my lightest fabric and fabric five being my darkest, which means that blue is going to be in the middle as well as out here. And this lightest fabric is going to be a ring right in here. You could absolutely reverse it as well and have a dark ring in the middle that fades to light and fades out to light. That would be another way. I think it might look a little more bullseye-y, especially with the colors that I picked, but um, make yours however you want. I would love to see your versions. So we're gonna start by cutting our strips. I need five one and a half inch strips of fabric one. Um, and let's see, da, 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 da. Um, it's one and a half inch by 20 inch strips. So on my fat quarters, the long way is the 20 inch way and the short way is 18 inches. So I wanna cut them this way on my fabric. Um, that's just important to note to make sure that your strips are long enough. And these are Art Galley fabrics. One of them here has a selvage. I'm going to choose to cut this pretty selvage bit off so that I can keep it, but the rest don't have a pretty selvage end. So I'll just do that with that one. Um, and then fabric one and fabric five, I need five strips. Fabrics three and four, I need 10. And fabric two, I need 11. So it makes it easiest to stack them up in a certain order. So let me go ahead and first cut off this selvage that I wanna keep. Um, and then we'll stack our fabrics in the right order. So with selvages, I like cutting off an extra inch beyond the selvage. Um, edge so that I can see what fabric the selvage was actually for. So I'm going to take my diamond strip ruler. It has lines on it. This first dark line is my one inch line. So I line that up. Cut this off and I have a pretty one inch piece of selvage to save for a future selvage project. Okay, this was my fabric two. I want to have fabric two on the very bottom because that's the one that I need 11 strips of and to make this fit I'm actually going to turn my mat so it's kind of the longer way here and then I just cut off this nice straight selvage edge so let's line that up and then on this end I'm going to make sure that it lines up with this cutting line that I'm not losing any of my strip. I moved it again. There we go, I want it to be past that cutting line. And we can see this was cut, oh, about a half inch skew, but I still have 17 inches which is what I need to be able to cut out of this strip, so I'm okay. All right, so going back to our instructions. Next, I wanna stack up fabrics three and four because three and four are my fabrics that I, that I need 10 of, and you'll see why I do it in this order. All right, this light one was my fabric one, and this 
darkest blue was my fabric five. And these were my three and four. All right, and then fabrics one and five, I only need five strips from, so I'm gonna do these last. So this is five fat quarters stacked on top of each other. You should be able to comfortably cut through five fat quarters. If you can't, that's totally okay. Um, if cutting through five fat quarters is too many, um, cut through two, cut through three, cut one at a time. There's no rule here. You just wanna be able to cut them um, as accurately as you can. Um, and if that means cutting them one at a time, it's not a race. Cut them accurately. All right, so I'm gonna line this up. Let me show you how I'm lining this up so that you can see. You bring this up. So on both the bottom of this ruler and on the top of this ruler is a um, horizontal line and the rest are all vertical lines. Well, and then we also have our diagonal lines. But these horizontal lines are designed to be able to line up with a line on the mat on both the top and the bottom. And that way you're able to line up 90 degree angles and that makes it more likely that you'll have a really nice, straight, beautiful cut. Okay. There we go. So I've trimmed this off and especially here at the top, I wanna to make sure, do I have all five strips? Yes, I do. That means I was able to square off all five of them and I don't have a jagged edge anywhere. And now I'm going to be totally wild. I'm gonna turn my mat around because I'm right-handed and I wanna be able to cut going this way as I cut. It just makes life easier for me. And I'm gonna cut one and a half inch strips. So I do have to flip the diamond strip ruler around and I have my one and a half inch line. For this ruler, it's also marked here on the bottom. Your one and a half inch line is marked down here on the bottom. So I line up my one and a half inch line. I can also um, do my horizontal line in addition to my vertical lines. And there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut five strips. That's one, each one and a half inches wide. Okay, so now I've cut five strips through all five layers and I can take off fabrics one and fabrics five because I only need five strips of these. Not shifting, not moving the rest. And so now I'm gonna cut five more because I need 10 of strips three and four. And that's why we stack them this way so that we would have a very easy to remove the step numbers one and five when we were done with them. And we could keep going with all the rest after we do five one and a half inch strips of these three layers, which is fabrics two, three, and four. Then we'll go ahead and do um, one more of just fabric two, which means 11 strips. All right, one, two, three, four, five of these, which means we have 10 of them since we already had five with fabrics one and two. So now I can take fabrics four or three and four off, and I just need one more of fabric two. All right, I've cut all my strips. I'm going to stack them in order of one through five with all of ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives together, and then we'll come back and start getting ready to sew. Okay, I have all my strips cut, and I have them here on the edge of my mat, and I'm just using my Sew Tights cutting mat, and then the boosters that come with it, and that way I can hang these off the edge of my mat. I have most of my mat still to play with, and I have these stuck here in order. So one, two, three, four, five, and they're stuck right here on my mat, um, just dangling off the edge. Um, and that, yeah, keeps them handy. They won't get blown away or pushed off anywhere fairly easily. And yeah, now I'm ready to go on to the next step. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our instructions. And I have, yep, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. 
And sewing instructions start by making strips at A. And what we're going to do is we're going to make A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or F1, G1, H1, and then also F2, G2, and H2. Um, so we're just going to follow through the instructions to make these strip sets. So collect eight strips as shown below, going 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And um, we're going to offset the ends to maximize the fabric. We're offsetting by 3 quarter inch. So let's start sewing these five, then four, then three, then two, then one, then two, then three, then four. And this should be fairly self-explanatory. So I'm gonna grab a fabric one and a fabric four, sorry, it's a fabric five and a fabric four. And I wanna offset them by three quarters of an inch. So there's my inch, here's my three quarters of an inch. And this maximizes our fabric so that when we cut these all at an angle, we haven't lost all of our fabric. Now I have my quarter inch presser foot here on my sewing machine. And I will go ahead and start sewing these just with a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me put my readers on. And we're just gonna sew down this whole seam. All right, we have fabric five and then fabric four. We, are, we can press these later, we don't need to press them yet. So the rule with pressing when you're pressing fabrics is that you always have to press before another seam goes over it. So in this case, here's my seam and before any other seam goes this way, I have to press or really before I'm cutting this way as well. Um, since I'm just adding parallel strips all the way along it, I don't need to press yet. I can press all those seams at once, which actually I think is much easier. All right, so we're gonna add our fabric three. So let me grab a fabric three right on here. And we have our fabric. We wanna make sure that we're continuing to add them in the right spot. So I don't wanna be adding fabric three to fabric five. Fabric three should always be sandwiched between four and then two below it. And then same as before, I'm gonna find the three quarter inch spot to offset this by there we go and then take this to the machine and sew another 20 inch long seam so i'm going to keep doing this adding um five four three two one and then two three four just like the instructions say and then i'll have my whole strip set ready and the next step will be to press them before cutting them apart so we'll be right back with that so I have all my strips together, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, um, no five on this end. And I have swapped out my mat. So I took away the cutting mat and I have a wool pressing mat here instead. The wool pressing mat is not on top of my cutting mat because I find that the wool pressing mat um, doesn't do enough to keep the heat off of a cutting mat. And I've ruined a couple cutting mats by putting wool pressing mats on top of cutting mats. So cutting mat put away, wool pressing mat on top. And I have my little Aliso Mini here heating up. And now I'm going to press these seams open. So I can press all these seams open one after the other. And I just want to be careful as I press that I don't press one to the side on accident as I go to press these open. Oh, these ones, there we go. That one wanted to stick together. And then I like to give it a little wiggle. And I feel like that helps open up the seam from the bottom as well as the top. and just press all the way down. Nice hot iron. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that. Pressing each one of these seams. All the way to the end. All right, I've given it a good press from the back and from the front, and now I'm ready to switch back to my cutting mat so I can cut this up. So we're looking at our instructions and we're gonna line up the seams, which are these seams here, with the lines on the ruler. So those would be the fuchsia lines. And every other line should line up with a seam line if we did perfect quarter inch seam allowances. And it looks like I did a pretty good job because those are lining up really well. And then I'm gonna bring this up to the absolute shortest strip, which is this there. I know that these other ones are longer, that's totally fine, um, but I want to get as much out of this strip set. So I'm gonna start by cutting right there.
I'm going to cut all of this off. And then we can turn this around. And I'm not worried about lining this up with any of the lines on my mat. I'm just looking at the lines on my ruler. And you can again find the one and a half inch on your ruler and line up that one and a half inch with the edge. And then all of these fuchsia lines should line up with the seam allowances or the seam lines. And I'm cutting one and a half inches. And I'm going to do this eight times. I'm cutting eight of these. Now, if you're finding that things are starting to get skewy at all a little bit, which can happen, you just bring it back this direction, line up your seam lines again. And square off just as little bit as you can. And that'll square up this end again. And then turn it back. So again, we need eight of these A strip sets. I've cut my pieces for strip set A. I'm actually just going to stick them up behind me here. That way I don't have them lost. These are all of my A pieces. And I'll continue on my B, C, D, and E pieces. Because they are all made the same way. There are a couple things to note as we go through the instructions. But for B, C, D, and E, we're going to make them the exact same way. Sewing our sets according to the instructions. Cutting them apart. Right? Easy enough. For strip set D, what we have left over after we cut our pieces, we're going to save that because we're going to use it in F1. So um, we're going to make A, B, C, D, and E as our strip sets, but then the rest are actually being made out of parts from A through E. So I'm just going to go ahead and make all my strip sets for A through E and then cut up those strip sets, making sure to keep the extra from D. And then we're going to work on F through H2 together. All these just made the same as what we just did. All right, friends, about one episode of Bridgerton later, and I have A, B, C, D, and E all cut and put up on the board so they're up and out of the way and don't get mixed up at all. And I'm ready to start on F1. So for F1, we take what we have left over from our D unit, and then we take this last strip two that we have left over and we're going to attach it to this piece so the way that we're going to do that is you can see there's already a two on this end so obviously it's not going to go on that end we're going to put it on this end and let's see this is going to be the easiest way to put it on i'll go ahead and give myself that three quarter inch to give myself that extra three quarter inch on this one as well and sew this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. Yes, this strip is way longer than we need. We don't need the full strip on there. Um, but it's fine. We'll cut off what we don't need and put that with our scraps and use it for a scrap project in the future. This project actually creates some really great scraps to use for whatever projects you want because the scraps are cut at that diagonal. And so it makes for fun angles to start with on your scrap projects. All right. So I have this one on here. Um, I'm going to press this open and then we're going to cut this set. All right, this is pressed. I can go ahead and trim off this side. Find it good. So my quarter inch wasn't as good on this one it looks like. I kind of got a little off. That should be okay. It'll make it interesting when I go to have my diamonds match up. And for F I need, for F1 I need four of these. Alright, so what I forgot to do was take the pieces off the other end that I don't need. Um, now I added my strip number two to a strip number one. So it's these ones that I need to take off. And for F1, I need to take fabric of these. Um, I need to take fabric one and two off. So these ones off right here. So I'm gonna take it off at this seam. 
This would have been easier to do before I cut because now I have four seams to rip. And then here I'm using my Zippy Ripper. Um, these are sold by Heidi Pridemore of the Whimsical Workshop. Um, I will link to her below. So um, this is actually the fastest way ever to rip seams. You can totally use a standard um, seam ripper, but I, for ripping seams, love the Zippy Ripper. And so I'll link to her if you want a zipper, Zippy Ripper yourself. There we go. And now these can all get opened up. Um, I do have this notch right here. Um, and this right here, which I'm not going to worry about. Those are just fine. They won't really get in the way. But we will want to press these seams flat again so that it makes it easier to piece. All right. I'll press these. These are my F1. And this is extra. So we're going to put this over in our extra pile. So we've done F1. G1 says collect four strips from E. I'm going to do that. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to remove fabric one and two from, let's see. Remove fabric one and fabric two from one end and then fabric two from the other end. All right, these also will need the seam ends pressed, but these are my four G1. Now I have my H1, and I need to grab four sets from C. And I need to remove fabric three from the end. All right, so those are my H1. And then for F2 and G2, I'm gonna collect two strips from A. I'm going to remove and keep fabrics two, three, and four. So this is two, three, and four to become F2. And then for, I'm going to take fabrics three and four to become G2. And now H, I need to collect one of strip set B. And then I need to take two of the fabric four diamonds. This is my fabric four. And that one. All right, so this is all scrap. I'm gonna go and press all of these so that the seam allowance is flat. And then we're gonna turn the page and go to sewing up our stitches. All right, we're ready to start laying out all of our parts. And I'll go ahead and do that here on the table because it makes it really easy to take it from the table to the sewing machine. You lay yours out, you go ahead and lay yours out however is easiest to you. Um, we're just gonna do it just like the it shows here where we go A, B, C, D, E, F1, G1, H1. Remember we have um, F1, G1, H1, and then F2, H2, G2. Um, the F2, G2, H2, um, go for the side section. So I'll show you here on the pattern. We're going to go A, B, C, D, E, F1, G1, H1. We need four of these, and this is going to be one, two, three, four, our four corners. And then we need our side sections, which will look like this. And you see our side sections have these big extra points on them. That's just because it made it much easier for us to sew the strip sets this way. So we'll end up trimming that off here when we finish up the top. So don't worry about all the jagged edges. Um, all right, so let's start by making one of our corner sections. So we need an A, B, C, D, E, F1, G1, H1. Okay, we have everything laid out. And I have it laid out so you can really see the 
diagonal stripes that are being made and you really want to do that because these strips will lay in exactly the same way upside down or right side up so in order to know if it's upside down or right side up you need to be able to tell oh look that's not working and that's not working and that's not working so double check them make sure that they're at an angle this one is super tricky as well because look if i flip it over the reds all line up but the blues don't so just pay attention to how all those diagonals line up and then you can start sewing these together so we'll take a and b and sew them together you want to put them right sides together and here's the trick with these let me bring it really close to the camera you have your seam allowances and if the edge of the seam allowance lines up with that seam line on the piece below it then if everything has all been sewn with perfect quarter inch seam allowances sewing quarter inch seam allowance away right there should mean that the points line up perfectly when you flip it over so that's what you want to watch when you're sewing these diamond units together so let's bring it to the sewing machine pop those reader reading glasses on my readers so i can see what i'm doing line up the edge of the seam allowance with that seam line and that should give you a perfect quarter inch triangle all the way around and by perfect quarter inch triangle that means from this edge to here should be a perfect quarter inch so the needle should land right in that notch when you go to sew it all together and all of this is bias edges so you want to go slow and I'm really feeding it into the machine so the machine isn't pulling or stretching. So I'm not pulling, I'm actually kind of pushing it towards the machine to have it not pull or stretch. Bring this in as well. And I'm double checking that my edge of my seam allowance lines up with that edge All right that one's definitely not going to line up got one there that wants to be contrary so I'll take a look at it after I've sewn these all together. Okay. There we go. So let's take a look at these seam allowances. Let's take a look at how we did on these seam allowances. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. That one's off by like a thread or two. That one maybe off by a thread. That one looks solid. That's solid. Oh, actually, I didn't do that bad at all. I thought there was one that was going to be quite a bit off. Um, if there's one that bugs you, you can always just rip out that seam section where it bugs you and then adjust it and fix that. Or if there's just a couple, just rip out the section where there's a couple. But I'm I'm really happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over. And the fun thing about A and B is that if I flip it over, they're mirror images. So A and B, B and A, that's fine. And now I can attach C on, or if you want, you can do A, B, C, D, E, F, um, I guess F1, and then G1, H1, and then start sewing, and then sew these ones together and these ones together, so that you're sewing big sets. So you don't have to just add one on each time. I find it nicer to do it this way, where you're sewing them together in pairs, because then you don't have this big bulk that you, you're trying to build onto. So let me get myself set up here for the next pair. All right, I'll get these pairs all sewn together and then get them sewn into, I guess, quarters. Well, pairs gets them into quarters and then sewing the quarters together gets them into halves and then the two halves together makes the whole.
All right, with this one, you do want to be careful when you're sewing them together because you do have this extra up at the top. You want to be sewing them together like this. Now we have our quarters. Let's go ahead and sew them together into our halves. All right, here are the two halves. You can double check that things are starting to look correct before you go sewing more seams together. And then this is where the two halves are going to come together to make this whole. And this is one sixth of the finished quilt. Yay! Okay, I need to make three more of these to make the four corner units. And then we need to make the side units. I'll get back together with you to make the side units. In the meantime, I'm going to swap out my cutting mat for a pressing mat and heat up my iron again. And when I get back, we will press these and then talk about making those side units and then putting it all together. We're really getting close on this one. I have my four segments all sewn together. I also am nearly out of M&Ms, so I guess it's a good thing. And I'm going to go ahead and press these. So I'm grabbing my little iron over here and I'll show you how we press these pieces. This is also a chance to quickly double check that everything lines up. Got my bugs, my red, my floral, my pluses, my floral, my red, my bugs, my blue, bugs, red. So double check it before you press it because ripping it out now is easier than after it's been pressed. And as we press these, we want to make sure we're not going to flip over any of the seams that we've already pressed. So I'm kind of going right above it and then pressing it down. And then right above and pressing it down, we'll be able to give it another good press from the top as well. And this is really similar to the way we pressed last time. I can tell from the back whether or not these seams are lined up. And some of them are lined up a little better than others, but we'll see from the front how off they are and how much it really shows. If you have a big contrast, like where the dark or the red meets with a light fabric, sometimes it's more obvious. And but if it's too light, two of my like light fabrics coming together, sometimes it's not as obvious. And then it also depends how you're planning on quilting it, whether or not it's going to become more obvious or less obvious. And then also what the purpose of the quilt is. If you're just doing it for fun, maybe you do care, or maybe you don't care. If you're giving it as a gift, maybe who it's being gifted to matters how much you really care about the seams. If I do rip any of these out, my rule is I'll rip it out once and try to fix it. And if it doesn't get fixed or isn't fixed much after once, I'm not going to rip it out a second time. Um, unless it's like a competition quilt, which this definitely isn't. With a competition quilt, I'll rip it out a second time, but not a third, because at that point, you're just destroying the, the fabric with all the times that it's getting sewn into. All right, so I have all these. I'm gonna press from the front. They actually look really good from the front. That one is probably the most off. That one's a little bit off, but that one is right in the, the light where light and light meets, so it doesn't really show much. I'm actually really happy with how all these points are lined up. In the back, it looked like it was going to be a little more severe. That one's a little off, but there's a lot going on with the busyness of the fabric there. It's really not as noticeable. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press the other three of these, and then we'll get to work on making the two side pieces so we can put it all together. All right, making sure to hydrate because. Ooh, with these longer products, it's good to maybe get up and stretch, take a little sip, and now we're going to work on the last two sections, which are the two side sections. And then it's just a matter of putting the seams or uh, putting it all together. Okay, so I have my pieces up here. We'll bring them down for A, B, C, D, E. And then we have our F2, G2, and H2. And I'm just going to go ahead and take everything down at the same time um, and stack them up. 
All right, I have A, B, C, D, E, F2, G2, H2. And I've gone ahead and taken two of each because I can go ahead and chain piece these. I can do the first one and the second one, the first one, the second one, the first one, the second one, the first one, the second one, and sew them all together. And that's a lot faster to sew them all together. Um, and these are just getting sewn in the same way that we sewed all these sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or actually A, B, C, D, E, F1, or F2, G2, H2, all in one piece. And the mechanics are the same in terms of you're putting them right sides together, and then you're lining up the top of that seam allowance with the seam line, and that should give you your little quarter inch right here. Um, so all this is coming together the same as the other two. The only difference is that we have um, some shorter pieces on the end um, because we didn't need as much. And that way I was able to make this all fit inside five fat quarters, which was the goal was to have a fat quarter friendly project, five fat quarters that you can just kind of get like five fat quarters that look good together. And you can create an ombre effect or you can have this one is a little less ombre and a little more like soft and dark. Um, but yeah, you can five fat quarters and it makes this fun little project. All right. So I'm going to sew these together to make the two. Um, side units, I'm going to press them because pressing happens the exact same way as pressing the ones that we just pressed. And then we're going to talk about sewing it all together. Okay, so I have all six sections sewn together. And now it's just five more seams and we have the whole thing done. Um, so I'm going to put it up on the board behind me so we can see it all coming together. So I'm going to start with the two side sections, which are the ones that I just finished. So one side. other side. I'm going to add the two tops. And then the two bottom. And this is one last chance to check and make sure that all the pieces are correct. So I have my blue, bugs, red, making sure that I didn't flip anything because once I sew this all together, it gets really obnoxious to try to fix it. Okay, so I'm going to sew one half together and then the other half together. So that's one, two seams here and then one, two seams here. Then I do need to press between sewing each of those seams. You'll see why in a second. And then once I have the two halves made, then we can sew down the middle and the whole thing's done. Um, just squaring up is left. So we'll start with these two. I'm going to put them right sides together. And this is going to be much easier than all the other ones because everything actually matches up and lines up. So that makes it easier to put together. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine, still keeping that same quarter inch seam allowance, just like we have the whole time. And if you want to pin these seams to help them match up, you totally can. We are still, again, dealing with bias edges on a lot of these. So just watch your stretch and help guide it under the machine. So the machine's not pulling as much. That helps prevent some of that stretch. So we have these two together. We can go ahead and press the seam open. And just like before, we want to make sure we're not flipping any of our existing seams. So kind of lift it up a little bit and float it over the top and then bring it down. All right. And I can be a little less gentle. I don't have to float as I do the top. All the seams to stay flat. Oh, we're starting to see it come together. Isn't that so fun? It looks so much, I don't know, like I love the way it's looking as it gets put together, but when it actually gets put together, it's the finished look of it. I love it so much. Okay, so we're going to bring this back up to our design wall here. And now we're going to add this piece on here. And you can see we're going to be sewing over the seam just a little bit right here. And that's why we had to press this. So I'm going to go ahead and line this one up, show you that as well. Okay, so we're going to line this up. 
and there you can see that seam that we're going to go over which is why we press this and then same as the other we can line up all these seam lines perfectly so that we can get things to line up just right and this point should sit right in there it should be perfect right in there all right bring this over to the sewing machine same as before and then just remember we're not pulling on anything we would rather push than pull because pulling will stretch and what stretching actually does is it makes bubbles in the quilt and then it won't lay flat um, if you do end up with bubbles in your quilt you can there are tricks that you can do to make it lay flat again um, you can block your quilt after quilting um, also doing dense quilting in the areas where it's bubbling up can help bring that bubbling down so there definitely are ways that you can get your quilt to lay more flat if you end up with bubbles all right so I'm going to go ahead and press this the way that I pressed um, the last seam. So same way, um, pressing the seam open, then flipping it over and giving it a good press from the front. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other half. And then we're going to come back and talk about putting those two halves together. So you don't need to watch me put the other half together because the other half comes together exactly like the front. Um, same way, just two seams pressing between each seam and then it's before we put those two halves together that we may have some decisions to make depending on what our quilt is okay so I have the second half all done now there's a couple things to note so you can before putting these sections together trim up the sections and that way you don't have these points so I have some little extra points in the back in my seam allowance if this is something that you're doing for like competition entry, generally you want to do that. There's not a ton of bulk that's added by those points, so I didn't do that. Also, if your diamonds have really gotten off diamondy, then you might want to diamond them back up using the diamond strip ruler. Um, I haven't really found that as a problem. Um, however, you'll really see it at this point if there's a big issue. And so. Depending on how accurate your seams have been, this may be like bulging out or coming in. And if it's if these two seams are bulging in towards each other or bulging out away from each other, what that's going to do is that's going to create a lump in the middle. So if they're bulging in towards each other, you'll end up with kind of like a cone coming towards you when you try to lay the whole thing flat after it's done. And if they're bulging out from each other, then when you try to sew it together, you'll have a lot of ruffles along the edges. So the middle will lay flat, but the edges will all be roughly. So neither of those is ideal when you're trying to quilt it. And so this is a step where you can go ahead and try to fix that. It depends how bad it is. So this actually doesn't look that bad at all. Um, let me grab my ruler and we can just actually double check it. So I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's a little bit out on this end, a little bit out on this end. Um, so that means this one is bulging, the center is bulging away. And so that would give me a little bit of roughly edges. I don't see it as that bad. I'm actually gonna choose not to trim it up because here's the two sides of it. I could go ahead and trim it up and that would make it so that I would have a less roughly edges. But if I go ahead and trim it up, that means obviously there's less diamond here and it might be more difficult to line these seams up and even if they line up these diamonds might look too small look weird so it's definitely a choice depending on how bad it is you may even not want to trim off the full thing and make it completely straight but just straighten it up a bit so it's not as bad um, that's also an option and these are the kinds of things that as you make more quilts and as you make decisions about okay how much do I square this up do you you decide right if you wanted to square it up when we still had our six pieces, you would take your diamond strip ruler and you would line up one of the diagonal edges with the diagonal seam. And let's see, in this case, it would be right there, there. 
and I could have trimmed up this side or I could have lined up along this middle and lined up my um, vertical and diagonal seams with this middle, trimmed off a little on this side, trimmed off a little on that side, and that would have helped square all these pieces up to make them go together just a little bit smoother. But again, it does trim away some of your pieces. So sometimes getting those points exact after you've trimmed it up is more difficult, kind of a coin toss. Which way do I want it to go together? And also how off it is. These aren't terribly off. I'm not worried about it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these down and we're gonna sew these halves together. So take our two halves, right sides together. And it's so funny because these are like kind of unintentionally patriotic with the red, white, and blue, but then they have the bugs in there. So not really patriotic, I don't think. And this is going to be the same as putting those sections together where all of our lines, our seam lines, are just going to line up. And we're going to sew all the way down. This middle where all the pieces come together can be the trickiest. I went with a dark fabric for the middle, and I tend to do that a lot. Um, doing that dark fabric in the middle means that it hides a little bit. If you do a fabric that has a lot of pattern, um, sometimes it can be more obvious if those points don't all exactly come together in the middle. All right, we can give this one more press. Pressing right down the middle. Now, depending on what your next step for this project is, you may not want to square up now. You might want to quilt it first and then square it up after quilting. Um, that can be a little easier um, to square it up after quilting because quilting can also sometimes make it a little wonky. And so that way, um, depending on what kind of wonk you have going on, you might be able to undo some wonk from this stage in the quilting stage. And so you square it up after quilting. Doesn't always make sense to square up twice now, now and then after quilting. And it lays fairly flat from my angle. I can see, like, I don't know if you can see it, it's shifting a little bit here. There is a little bit of fullness is what we call it when it ruffles. So there's a little bit of fullness in here. You can get, see a little here. Um, sometimes you can starch and iron that out. But really the best way to work through that fullness is to, the best way to work through that fullness is to do it in quilting. So because all my fullness is more towards the edges, that means I'd want to quilt less densely here and quilt more densely here, and that would suck up some of the fabric. And the reason that sucks up some of the fabric is because if you have a piece of fabric and you do a line of quilting in there, like a line of stitching through all the layers, that actually pulls the fabric down a little bit and see how pulling it down, same amount of fabric, takes a little bit less space because it got pulled down. And so the more quilting lines you do, the more those get pulled down. And that kind of creates almost like micro pleats, but they're not pleats because pleats would not look pretty. So denser quilting on the outside, lighter quilting on the inside would help any of that ruffling around the edges. All right, friends, here it is all squared up. If you have questions about squaring up, I have an entire video on squaring up projects that I will make sure to link to so that you get all the details on squaring up. But I wouldn't square this up generally until after it's all quilted. So get it all quilted and then square it up to make sure that the quilting doesn't add any or um, ruffling to it, or just in case your quilting does take out any fullness, that you have a nice smooth quilt top in or finished quilt that you're squaring up. But yeah, don't worry about this squaring up stage until you have it all quilted. Friends, make sure you subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Let me know what you thought. Um, again, this was done with the diamond strip ruler and it can be done start to finish with just that one ruler because that'll cut your strips, cut your diamonds. And because of the vertical and horizontal lines, you can actually use it to square up your quilt as well. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Um, friends, I will see you right here real soon. Bye for now.